Fuck Mary Kill out of the other three. Okay, let's do it. Jordan here from the Crystal Casino Band, and I'm about to spend some time with you. You guys asked me your questions that you submitted through the Instagram story, and it was open for a conversation. This is my first time spending it with you on the vlog individually. I've been on other vlogs, but this is my first of my own. So Morgan isn't able to cut me out or put me at the end like you usually don't. All right, let's get to it. You guys asked me a lot of questions. Get to know me. What do you guys want to know about me? Um, let's just let's just dive right into it. First question you guys have for me is, who is your favorite bass player right now? Great question. I think you'd have to mention Thundercat just based on his contribution to the current day conversation of bass players. He absolutely slaps. Dragon Ball Durag is probably one of my favorite bass lines of the last few years. Um, definitely last year. Great song, hilarious. The way the, the melody works with the bass line as well. Super inventive, super fun. But I think my favorite bass player these days is Laura Lazy of Crumbin. I think she is a great pocket player. She's able to work with the melody, craft almost lyrical notes through her bass playing, but also, you know, as I mentioned, staying in the pocket, staying in the groove. Crumbin, one of my favorite bands. I think she's up there for my favorite bass players as well. What's your favorite song you guys have out? So if I've, I've only actually recorded on three, excuse me, I've actually only recorded on one of the last three singles from the Crystal Casino band due to re-entering the band in as the Crystal Casino band. Um, I would say Waste My Time. Although the only one I've played on that's been released, it also is my favorite. Um, it just completely soars, pops. Um, Pete's vocals sound great as well. And I, I'm really proud of my bass playing on it. Additionally, in terms of the Colony's work, I think my favorite songs I've played on were Open Table, Found Me Something Good, and Fade. Those are my proudest moments as a bass player. I think my style is heard. And I also think they're some of the best songs that he has written. And now they're actually as one on Spotify, so maybe there's a different channel. What's your drink of choice? See, it's been a while since we've been able to raid at bars since COVID. I think my drink of choice is gonna be a, a rum and ginger ale. Definitely a ginger ale rail drink. I think it's like the best mixer. Not totally disgusting like other kinds of sodas and the claims that it helps your stomach that, that mothers invented you know i still think a lot of us believe that to be true so rum and ginger ale is my answer to sustain you through the night you know then maybe maybe transition to a light beer like a bud light later into the shenanigans why do you hate me i'm unable to answer questions that are my own catchphrases so that one's unfortunately off the table but i appreciate you asking are you single yes i am and I'm not gonna make eye contact with the camera. Where do you get your male manipulator glasses? So I get my male manipulator glasses from the DC male manipulator group chat. We talk about Radiohead. We talk about our game plan, our strategy for like pretending to like Beauty Bridgers, despite not actually liking her. But to impress women, to look cool. But we also have a, a thread just about fashion. And that's where the glasses were recommended to me, but also other fashion items, like, like these shoes. These are from the MMGC. We also wear black masks now. That's, that's the latest I've heard from leadership. Why did you choose those frames for your glasses? Other than guidance from MMGC. I got them because I really like clear frames. I like round glasses. And they have like this blue lining that kind of, I believe, matches with my blue eyes. I got them from Warby Parker. They're a little bit like slanted on my face. I don't know if that's because my face is crooked or because my nose is crooked, but um, I like clear frames and I like that they have like, this blue lining on them. Rank the milks. So we all knew this was going to come up inevitably just due to the popularity of Joey and his, his vlogs. Number one for me is definitely oat milk. I think oat milk is the most sustainable and also the best tasting. It's also probably the most expensive, which is unfortunate. Second, I think is the OG cow's milk. I'm with Joey on that wave. Not 
as sustainable, but it, it's it's the plastics that I respect it. I think last is, is almond milk. Almond milk is not sustainable and it also just tastes really watery. It takes about one gallon of water to create an almond. So when you touring again, I would love to know that as well. I think live music is like the first thing on my list once we're allowed to congregate in public settings again. I would love to jump in a band and just like cross the country and touring. It's never done it before with the band. Um, so definitely on top of my list, bucket list in terms of life as well. I'd love to hit all the stops, Nashville, Austin, get to California as well. Um, well, you know, we're touring again, get a shot, get vaccinated, wear a mask, stay distance. What's your favorite new album of 2021 so far? Or top three, if you can't narrow it down. No narrowing this down, but number one, it is probably Arlo Parts. She released an album called Collapse in Sunbeams. It's killer. I've never heard of her before, 2021, but she's got great Claro vibes, Frank Ocean vibes as well. The kind of atmospheric vocals that's, you know, in the lower range, but just totally killer. Great grooves as well. Um, totally recommend Arlo Parts and her music, Collapse in Sunbeams. Great album. Looking forward to St. Vincent's new album. She released a new single, which is great. Looking forward to Paul McCartney's three, Reimagined. He's bringing in his favorite artists, like Krungbin, like St. Vincent, and like Beck and Anderson Pock to kind of reinvent his album from last year, which was good. It was a good album. Um, excited to see how these artists interpret it. I wasn't that excited before until I heard Dominic Fike, who I've never heard of him before, but he has a single from McCartney Free Reimagined, and it's Kiss in Venus, Kiss of Venus, excuse me, um, and it's just so good. He totally just transformed the song and made the melody like a bunch better. That's not easy to do with a Beatle, to one up a Beatle, so. Um, McCartney Free Reimagined is now I'm looking forward to it's on my list. What was the most noticeable change to the band once you return? Great question. I definitely thought about this a lot. Um, I think that the like, business aspect of the band, the way we streamline, um, we strategize things more often. And then, but the biggest thing I've noticed is definitely production. Um, we're going to spend more money, more time on it. You know, able to criticize in a positive light, our, our own parts to each other, um, provide feedback, and really like narrow down on what we're playing for each note in the band. Um, take it way more seriously, probably because of that time and money we put into it, into how the song goes from demo to final product and totally worth it I think in terms of how the songs sound now and also uh, I think there's proof in, in the streaming numbers as well. Why is George the best Beatle? A question that was undoubtedly meant to be under my skin because George Harrison, his unbelievable talent, ability to write the best songs that are written can't be in the competition with Best Beatle. That's reserved for Paul or John, just based on the sheer volume of songs they wrote for the Beatles. Um, you can tell I have like a, a soliloquy writ written out for this, but Paul or John are the only two that can be considered in, in the debate for Best Beatle. Favorite show with the band? Good question. Scholarly theory would go, would suggest that this is Rupert's Union, which happened in May of 2019, May 19th, 2019. It was my last show with the band, and it was about three hours long. We had all of our family there, all of our college friends, and the place was totally packed. It's like smacked out of the middle of Alex Morgan one day before we graduated. <laughs>
Cotton in the DC Music Scene as well. Believe it or not, that that's all the questions you guys have for me. So I'm really glad we had this time together. Hope we can do this again. I'm not sure what overall strategy is from from the top of the Chris Cortino band about whether or not I'll be able to have these moments with you. So cherish it. I look forward to getting to know you all more. So be sure to like our band on all the Instagram, social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also to subscribe to us on YouTube and all the other stuff that he usually says. Um, I said it too. Thank you all. Have a good night. Farewell. Peace, love. Bye.